Kurt just passed the stern. Atlanta's in the water. Copy that. This is an audio slate for dive H2005, exhibition NA154, UTC time is 06.16.30.
Bravo Dan, call stop, five zero meters. Ready for handover at five zero meters. You should have control. Copy that. Hey Robert, you able to hear me? Very okay. loud and clear. Uh, so I wanted to ask if you were ready for me to push the dive salvo for you. Oh, hang on. I can't hear Dan. Dan's got it turned way down. All right. Just asking if you had the dive salvo, or if you're ready for me to push that. Uh, we already did that. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. I think you have, might have some modification that doesn't show up on my thing. Okay, thanks. I'll wait for you to catch up. All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, this is a uh, start of dive H2005 on expedition NA154, the EV Nautilus. Uh, we're just descending, just began our descent a, a few minutes ago, down to um, a, uh, an unnamed seamount that we uh, just mapped earlier today. Uh, this is uh, uh, this uh, dive tonight is going to be uh, a seamount very close, just north of the Northwest Hawaiian Ridge. And uh, this is the first time it has been explored. Oh, mahalo. Mahalo, Val, our uh, amazing watch lead. Uh, this is Daniel Kinzer, Science Communication Fellow. Excited to uh, descend to what looks like uh, roughly uh, two and a half kilometers depth where we'll begin to we'll acquire the seamount, ridge on the seamount, and start making our way towards the summit. Expected dive duration in about 24 hours. 
That means you'll get at least two of the yes. amazing 8 to 12 watch team, at least two <laughs> sessions um, with us. We're looking forward after after the show, after the gifts from Kanaloa, from, from the ocean, from Papahanaumokuakea, we, that really, truly we've been receiving for the past two weeks, but especially wowing us last night, yesterday, on uh, currently unnamed Seamount. Number 17 was last night? That was 17, 17 last night. This is 11. We're excited to bring you with us. Uh, we would love for you to tune in on Nautilus Live. Send in your questions, your comments, your thoughts, your species identifications, your stories, your uh, cultural connections, um, your love for the ocean, love for the deep sea. Dr. Val especially loves those who love the rocks, but she really loves them all. And uh, Very much so. <laughs> so does Virginia Kukui, myself, Mahina, the whole team, the whole amazing front row. But best front row in the game. Definitely starting lineup of anyone's uh, fantasy deep sea exploration team. <laughs> that should be a thing. That should be a thing. I might have just started something. Uh-oh. I think you did. Uh-oh. I quit already. Like We should have, like, trading cards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, remember that as kids? It was so fun. Oh, yeah. Come Those on. are great. Yeah, but it would take, like, 20 of mine just to get one of yours. <laughs> <laughs> I'd feel bad. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> oh. All right. Uh, this is the... Now seventh dive, I believe, on the Ala Almoana Kaiuli expedition in Papahanaumokuakea National Marine, Mo Marine National Monument, largest marine national monument in the states, under consideration for marine sanctuary protections, which we hope they'll get after after we've witnessed what we've witnessed here. This is a place um, all of the ocean really is, but this place in particular deserves our utmost respect and care and attention and protection. And I certainly hope it gets uh, whatever uh, whatever legislators and policymakers will allow for. Mm -hmm. But I'm almost more excited for uh, what's going to happen as uh, our Kanako Iwi community, our cultural working group with Papa Hanaumokuakea, among others, or the children of Hawaii, begin to name these amazing seamounts based on what uh, they're able to see from from the footage here. Yeah, what a what a treat! This has just been spectacular, and we still have uh, nearly two weeks left. I heard at least half a dozen other seamounts. Yep. Fun's not stopping anytime soon. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, we're gonna see plenty more uh, unique environments, seamounts as we go along. Every one of these dives is different. I was even noticing just on the map. You know, there are some similar features. We talked about seamount. Uh, 17 and having that kind of flank that collapsed and that large wall. This doesn't quite have, you know, that had a, that was a gyo, um, had yeah. a flat top. This one seems to just kind of rise to a summit, but you can see evidence of still some steep cliff faces on, on yeah, at least one of its sides. This one looks very different. It's uh, definitely not a gyo, and we see instead um, a, a series of uh, very in interconnected ridges on this one, and it's uh, not so clear whether or not this has the same sort of uh, 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 flank collapse, uh, you know, flank modification history that Seamount uh, 17 displayed for us. So um, it's uh, something that we're uh, rather eager to explore and learn a lot more about over the next uh, uh, next 24 hours on this Seamount. One thing, uh, Dr. Val, you were sharing with me earlier is that um, we are um, we're kind of sitting at an interesting intersection where these uh, these Maunakai, these uh, underwater sea mounts, deep sea mounts, uh, kind of sit at the intersection of two ridges, and you know the the mantle plume. I ho I'm hoping I'm getting some of the terminology correct. I've been trying to study up, but uh, the You're mantle right. plume that. Uh, you know, this this could have been associated with the mantle plume that created the Hawaiian Islands, but it's also very likely that it might be associated with an older, um, some older mantle plumes moving across the Pacific in a different direction. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, yeah, we're uh, uh, in an area where we have uh, overlapping volcanic histories, uh, one of which uh, dates back to uh, the Cretaceous in this area. We think... Um, somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 100 to about 80 million years ago. Um, but we're, we're also very close to the Northwest Hawaiian Ridge, 
So we don't know yet um, whether this is one of those Cretaceous seamounts or if this is something uh, that's a little younger, closer to about you know 25 to 30 million years old, which would place it um, uh, much, uh, which would uh, place its origin uh, more with uh, the uh, Hawaiian hotspot. Oh wow! So um, yeah, we'll see what we see down here. There, there may be some field evidence that could help us infer that before we get the uh, any samples back to the lab. Um, but also, it's also just as likely that we may not entirely know uh, until we can get some uh, uh, some data back. So a lot of I'm really excited to see the uh, what we bet, get. Yeah, I know you are. A lot of uh, wow, just a lot of unknowns on this quest to to piece together uh, puzzles that date back tens of millions of, of years. Yeah. It's uh, pretty exciting stuff. Some pretty deep knowledge that we're after. Absolutely, literally, figuratively, we're all of it. Trying to understand yeah. how this ocean works. Yeah, it's incredible. I'm so glad to be sitting next to you and uh, the rest of our amazing 8 to 12 watch, the, the greatest the greatest 8 to 12 watch band ever assembled. Um, <laughs> I think at least in the back row, it looks like we're all settled in and, and maybe we can uh, maybe we can share introductions. Yeah. I think the world knows. I have knows. to apologize for our lateness, though. We yeah. were uh, all sunset taking a little time <laughs> to enjoy the sunset and the launch, and it was just a beautiful evening. So uh, we were a little bit slow getting into the control van, but uh, we're all yeah. here now yeah. and we're all ready to go. Hawaiian time, that's what we say. Hawaii hey, time. Hey, there Hawaiian we go. Time. Sunset comes first. Yeah. <laughs> Especially out in Papa Hanaumo Quick Air. Absolutely. Mahina, can I pass it over to you? Yes. Um Ano Aike Aloha, Aloha Ahihi Kako, O Mahina Lenny Cavalleri Koi Noa. Um good evening everyone. My name is Mahina Lenny Cavalleri. Um no Oahu Mai Ao. I'm from the island of Oahu. Thank you for joining us on Poalima fifteen Keke Mapa. September fifteenth. 2023 we seem to lose days the the track of days out here um, but just very fortunate to be out here on the ala omwana kaiuli expedition in papahanaumokuakea marine national monument and i just have a piece um, to kind of elaborate on the ala omwana kaiuli um, name of the expedition as you know many of our viewers and our crew on board know that this is the path of the deep sea traveler um, but it is also it also speaks to the responsibility and accountability that we have to each other in protecting our shared ocean um, it is a reflection of our collective experiences as people who love and protect the ocean um, and it incites images physical and metaphoric paths connecting ocean people to each other in various spaces within the ocean uh, these paths have been meticulously tended to over time, but the name also reminds us of our continued shared responsibility to care for these paths and our ever-developing relationships. Um, I know in some of our previous dives, we've spoken about how names give power, and especially in the Kanakoi Ivi um, school of thought, names give power, and then when spoken, the true name or the most fitting name um, or the indigenous name, native name, then uh, it gives life and power to that person, to that place. So really looking forward to when these sea mounds do get their names and when we can have more discussions back at home within our communities um, to find that, that fitting name. But mahalo for joining us. Thank you very much. We're looking forward to the dive. Oh, mahalo nui mahina. Just thinking of the time we just shared together as a crew, um, getting ready, preparing for, for launching tonight, uh, watching an incredible video about the partnership between Papahanaumokuakea and the Native Hawaiian community uh, and Ocean Exploration Trust and the Nautilus over the last few years, uh, seeing several of our own, eight to well, at least one of our own, 8 to 12 watch team members uh, featured in that video. <laughs> Uh, the bright light, the, the depth of knowledge. Yes. Um, that was a wonderful video. Uh, and uh, just really celebrating, um, celebrating, uh, you know, so many awesome Hawaiians doing amazing work culturally, ecologically, geologically, um, using all of the technologies, just uh, taking us into the future uh, while also uh, staying connected to the, to the deep past, to the deep past, really beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so uh, who better to throw it over to than, than the one and only, our favorite little kukui. <laughs> uh, mahalo nui guys. Um, ano ay meke aloha kako o vau kukui no mauio. Um, aloha everybody, my name is Kukui and I'm so honored and humbled to be here with all, you all today, both on this ship and on shore in this very special place, Papahanao Mokuakea. Uh, mahalo nui. 
Kukui, they're asking, the, the internet's asking for a wave. I say, oh, I'll give them a wave. Kukui will give you a wave. Mahina's, Mahina's tucked away, and a beautiful <laughs> corner going to be hard for hard for you to spot. <laughs> Mahina, I don't know if you can see. I'm the, I'm the big thing blocking most of the camera view <laughs> now. Sorry about that. Um, That's funny. Over, over to uh, the wonderful Virginia. Yes, sir. Hi all, uh, I'm Virginia. I'm a PhD student at Florida State University. I study um, communities on seamounts, particularly coral and sponge cor um, communities. I'm exceptionally excited to be a part of this cruise and a part of this, also a part of this dive. Um, and of course, the best watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I'm converting my own watch. They're, yeah. they're, they're joining the side of the yeah. greatest watch of all time. <laughs> Thank you. We're so excited. You're part of our watch, Virginia. You're one of the main reasons it's the greatest of all time. <laughs> Dr. Val got to introduce herself a little earlier. You want to go again? You want to share some more? Sure. Drop some rock knowledge on everybody. Um, what kind of rock knowledge do you well, want? Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you can also just share uh, about oh. where you where you're coming from and uh, true. I haven't awesome done that yet. You do. Yeah. All right. Good evening, Internet. Uh, I'm Val Finlayson. I'm a uh, postdoctoral researcher at the University of Maryland. I specialize in isotope geochemistry, particularly uh, of seamounts. So I study the, um, the origins and the histories of seamounts, uh, largely throughout the Pacific, sometimes in some other uh, ocean basins too, but the Pacific seems to be the place that I always come back to. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, it's a pretty cool place to be. I'm I'm really glad to be here tonight. Awesome, thank you. We're we're excited to be here alongside you in the control van and and uh, if it's a good time for them to share, introduce themselves, the the world's greatest front row. Sure. Um, my name is Catalina. I'm a master student at USF's College of Marine Science, and I'm serving as a navigator, assisting the pilots and maneuvering the ROVs around and. Yeah, it's a privilege to be here, and I've really enjoyed all the learning that I've done, um, both from the scientists and also from my Hawaiian colleagues who have been sharing their really beautiful culture with us. So, thanks. Yeah, yeah I'm Robert Waters from the Hurt Pilot, um, OET's facilities manager and ROV engineer uh -huh. at our facility at the Port of Los Angeles. And I'm happy to be a member of the greatest 8 to 12 watch <laughs> on this cruise. <laughs> yes, <laughs> on this cruise. It's catching. <laughs> oh, I love you guys. Thanks for playing along. <laughs> this is great. Zach, over to you. You're not on SPL. You just got to flip the switch there, Zach, so we can hear you. There we go. There we go. Uh, I'm Zach Gonzalez uh, from Houston, Texas. Been doing ROV for a couple years um, here on the Nautilus uh, as an Atlanta pilot with helping Robert um, as his co-pilot. And I'm um, just happy to be here on the greatest watch. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're happy you're here too, Zach. Awesome job. Best, uh, best navigator, best uh, ROV pilots, and no shadow of a doubt, best video engineer as well. Amber? Thank you. Hi, I'm Amber Flynn, a video engineer on the greatest watch of all time. <laughs> 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 oh. uh, I reside in Los Angeles and I am just thrilled again to be here. Such a pleasure to be learning with this team and from this team. Um, I can't even begin to put into words uh, just how special they become to me. Appreciate uh, them for uh, not just putting up with me and tolerating me, but often encouraging, encouraging my uh, silly behavior at times. So mm -hmm. it's. Uh, hey, we appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are becoming dear friends. Okay, I had a question that I I was asking Hannah, and then I was like, wait, I can ask Val, and then everyone can can Benefit. get the answer to this. Benefit. So Hannah was really excited because of some of the yellow rocks we saw yesterday. She had a name for it, and I've already forgotten what it was. Um, but then I was like, wait, yellow rocks. Where have I seen yellow rocks before? Um, and it was the yellow brick road. Oh. Yep. And then I was like, Han Hannah, are these the same? And apparently, like, they might be. And so then I was like, wait, so how, how do the they, same. how does, how, how do we get yellow brick roads 
as well as like kind of pebble yellow rocks. So you're actually asking the perfect person because uh, while well, Yellow Brick Road was not sighted on my watch last year, that was uh, mm -hmm. on the, uh, during the same expedition that I was on, and uh, uh, I was one of the folks who helped figure out what that seems to be. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah, one of the things that we see every now and again on these seamounts is a rock type called a hyaloclastite. And uh, yeah, we saw some of that last night. Uh, same sort of origin as the uh, yellow brick road that was uh, quite viral last year. Mm -hmm. it still shows up in the news cycle periodically. <laughs> um, yeah, so how do you make those? Yeah. Yeah. What, um, yeah. So what we think those are are um, they're obviously submarine deposits. So this is a this is a process that happens underwater. Um, we uh, believe it is uh, some, uh, some a volcano sedimentary or volcanic as well as sedimentary type of uh, rock formation that uh, occurs pretty close to a volcanic vent where you get a very energetic eruption. And what happens? Uh, in this case would be that um, you have uh, lava being erupted out of a volcanic vent um, rather energetically and it gets into the water column and gets torn apart by uh, the, the whole process of being jetted out uh, 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 cooling rather uh, uh, rather quickly a process we call quenching and that uh, tears apart and fragments uh, the lava and um, as it as it cools in the water column it settles out and builds up this uh, this deposit of uh, just uh, volcanic rocks is sort of a sedimentary uh, rock. And uh, because there's a pretty high surface area to volume ratios, these things get fragmented into small pieces. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's also um, permeability from seawater, potentially some uh, hydrothermal activity. These rocks alter very, very quickly relative to the lava flow rocks that we, uh, uh, that we uh, pick up most of the time. Mm -hmm. So probably very similar, if not the same rock type originally, but uh, these hyaloclastites alter much more extensively and much more completely, and they uh, turn this kind of yellow color. And they're very soft rocks too. So um, when uh, I cut them open on the saw, uh, they're very easy to cut through um, uh, compared to uh, uh, some of those angular rocks that we, uh, that we pick up. So yeah, what, when we see those on the seafloor, um, we're, uh, we're very, very close to uh, a volcanic vent. Doesn't necessarily mean that we're gonna ever be able to find it, but we know that um, there was some, there, there was a, uh, there was a localized eruption somewhere nearby. Oh. So with the Yellow Brick Road last year, um, there was, there was some evidence uh, as we were going along that uh, part of the dive track, uh, uh, because that happened not long after we got off of my watch, and uh, uh, it was spotted actually while I was downstairs in the lab before dinner um, nice. that day. Uh, we saw some evidence that there were some uh, regular lava flows sitting on top of these hyaloclastites, but it looked like maybe some things had kind of started um, like foundering off here and there. Uh, see, the lava flow uh, that was overlapping the uh, hyaloclastites was very broken up. So we could see that contact between the two rock types mm -hmm. as we went along. And then as the next watch took over, that's when they, um, that's when they saw this, this more open patch of uh, hyaloclastites and started seeing some of those fracture patterns. And uh, it's, it's hard to say exactly what was going on with that uh, swath uh, called the Yellow Brick Road, but what I can tell you is that most likely there was a lava flow once overtopping that. And, um, how it cooled, it probably ended up baking the top of that hyaloclastite deposit and forming a crust. And there may have been, um, just with the way it cooled, some very regular um, orthogonally aligned, basically 90 degree aligned uh, uh, fracture patterns related to that baking uh, from the overtopping lava flow that caused those cracks that we saw. Interesting. Yeah. It seems in the cracks and like the those net, those lines that we see that seems to be common for like the cooling process seems to be really important for sort of seeing those cracks and w and where you see that and sort of the pattern is that is that and that seems to be across a lot of these different types of rocks. Yep. Oh, that's so yeah. So we were seeing that in uh, uh, on yesterday's dive mm -hmm. when we were going through um, that. Uh, the rocks on that cliff face where we'd see uh, rocks that have been erupted out and every now and again we'd see some other uh, rocks intruding through those as dikes. Yeah. So you'd see um, those are pretty easy to identify because they're these linear structures that would show up and then you'd see what looked kind of like ladder rungs uh, in them 
And those are cooling structures where basically the outsides of the lava quench first. Mm -hmm. And then you have um, these cooling structures that propagate inward, um, basically along the gradient of that cooling because you know the, the exterior cools first and then the interior uh, cools more slowly. And uh, as lava cools, it contracts. So it develops these structural weaknesses basically um, along that cooling gradient there. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. And we take advantage of that for uh, for sampling too. So that, um, you know, when we're always looking for these angular samples that we want to pick up for uh, the geochemistry, um, the geochemical work, uh, when we're looking for those angular wedge-shaped rocks, it's the same sort of thing that happens with these uh, pillow lava flows. So um, if you find a wedge-shaped rock, that's probably one fragment of this this pillow that uh, this pillow lava that is uh, very round in cross section. Same sort of thing. Uh, the outsides of that will quench first against the seawater, and the inside uh, cools last and most slowly. And you get those cooling uh, uh, those those cooling fractures, those cooling joints that sort of propagate inward and develop the structural weaknesses um, along that cooling gradient. So you, instead of uh, like with the dikes where you see it look like a ladder structure um, in the uh, in the pillow basalt, you see this sort of radial wedge-shaped uh, uh, fragmentation pattern. Interesting. So it's oh, all physics. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's cool. And so the difference between the yellow brick road um, and uh, the, uh, uh, Hyaloclastite? Hyaloclastite. Oh, yeah. damn! Nice. <laughs> wow. It's a mouthful. It takes a little win. practice I was practicing earlier, so I was oh. trying to do it. Oh. Yes, yeah. Botryoidal is another one. Oh. Botryoidal, yeah. Botryoidal. yeah. Botryoidal. That's, those are the lumps? Yeah. Yep. Good. Ah, We're getting see? better. We're getting, there is hope yeah. in the back row back here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. So the difference between the, um, the rocks we saw yesterday and the yellow brick road, that's probably due to multiple effects? Um, I'm, I'm guessing probably uh, we saw more of that baked crust on top of the yellow brick road. That was what mm -hmm. that yellow brick road basically was. Um, I didn't see any evidence of that yesterday, uh, but that doesn't mean that it uh, didn't at one time exist and just hasn't been like, you know, mm -hmm. uh, eroded off by, by whatever sort of current or other uh, uh, processes affecting that seamount. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't get a very good sense of the stratigraphy mm -hmm. of uh, that area yesterday, unfortunately. Yeah. So it was amazing. I'll you have know, to go back to the video. <laughs> we're we're talking earlier about naming things, and then you're talking about Yellow Brick Road, and I'm thinking we need a good Hawaiian name for this for Hyo. Hyaloclastite. Hyaloclastite. Hmm. Has it, has it, and then drops it, and then tries to pick it up again. <laughs> Don't um, worry, I do that's that all me the time. And fish. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Um, and just thinking about we, one of the things we learned earlier is uh, this naming process that they went through, uh, that some of the folks inspired by Ocean Exploration Trust and the Nautilus, um, presenting um, these new creatures of the deep sea mm. to uh, kindergarten yeah. learners and and the ten kindergartners immediately. Um, all in unison when looking at an amazing video of a gulper eel mm -hmm. and uh, said, I said, well, what would we call this? And so the person, there's a person who just said, I want a Hawaiian word of the day to learn. It wasn't a question, but it was a bit of a demand. So please, Internet, be, be polite, ask <laughs> nicely. Um, but uh, the Hawaiian word of the day is actually three words. The word for eel, mouth, and big. Eel, mouth, and big. So kukui, what's an eel? Puhi. 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 So Puhi is an eel. There are many varieties of eels. Gulper eels are spectacular. Their heads almost inflate like balloons. Um, maybe they're swallowing a lot. Of, I don't know actually the mechanism, if they're taking in a bunch of water or, or what they're filling their sort of um, is jaw sacks with. I'm not sure what that device is. Mm -hmm. We can talk a little bit more about that. But um, what's, what's mouth, Mahina? How do we say mouth? Waha. Waha. Waha, so puhi waha nui, puhi nui, yeah, the big mouth eel, yeah, the gulper eel. So our young Hawaiians, five, six years old, and naming a creatures of the deep, offering them, bestowing them, gifting upon them Hawaiian names and identities, I think that's spectacular. We're going to need that for more and more of our geological features. We were talking about naming seamounts. Yeah. So um, I love how all these uh, questions from you guys in the audience sometimes demands, but we'll rephrase them as questions. <laughs> um, I, that the, they're, they're all coming together for us, and that's been something we've all been noticing on board the ship, how 
how culture and community are coming to and nature mm -hmm. coming together with science and technology and engineering um, to really create a more holistic picture and holistic relationship um, with our ocean and, and with one another. Um, so you know? I think that's, uh, that's been, for me, a big highlight. So I appreciate all of you tuning in, um, helping bring that back out. And, uh, yeah, pretty You know, pretty we have cool. some geology terms that are inspired from uh, 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 the Hawaiian language. That's right. Um, so, obviously, we have puka. A, yeah. For hole. Yeah, the hole. And, uh, yeah, we, uh, that describes uh, some certain geologic features. Um, and then we have sort of the op opposite, which is kapuka. Yeah, which is uh, um, very, a very specific eruption, uh, sort of uh, uh, eruption-related feature that uh, we, we've seen several of these uh, recently with, uh, uh, say, the 2018 Kilauea eruption, where um, that's a bit of land that is untouched by lava, and, but completely surrounded by lava, and usually it's a little bit elevated. Yeah, so. and those are so important for, uh, you know, and, and the lava is a... Uh, the communities, biological communities in the Hawaiian Islands, uh, both uh, underwater and above, have evolved uh, to, to have uh, the capacity for continuing life in the wake of this uh, you know, little slightly chaotic environment, unpredictable environment, um, sometimes harsh and intense environment. And so those kipuka become the seeds of the forest that will then populate those lava flows, uh, you know, sometimes decades, uh, centuries, mm -hmm. millennia later. So uh, pretty, pretty awesome uh, geological formation or feature but also really critically biologically yeah. yep yeah, awesome that's right kids do make cool names for stuff thank you internet that they is sure correct mm -hmm. that is correct you um, know i had never seen a gulper eel before that uh before that video today <laughs> oh those are amazing i've seen that video and it is, it so, is so cool yeah Virginia, it's, it's I, like I know how it's does not, that I, even work <laughs> <laughs> i know that's not your wheelhouse or kukui maybe but uh, any idea on kind of what's actually going on and that you can look up the gulper eel video on uh, on youtube highlights mm -hmm. if you search nautilus's youtube page you can see what we're talking about but any idea what's kind of, is it a feeding strategy? What's a, a defense mechanism? What's going on there? Yeah. Um. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know too much about Puhi in general, but I have a feeling it is or some kind of, because um, like in the deep, you know, they, there's not too many like microorganisms they can feed on. And so no. I'm thinking that they use that. I could be wrong too, <laughs> but they use that in order to like, like a basking check. Like they've taken this oh. huge amount of water Kind of filtering it out. Mm. Oh shoot! It's cool. Uh, that's yeah. really interesting. I think if you, that's the case. Yeah. I, so I did. I did have to look it up on Wikipedia. I know that they are. They have like, when you look at them in um, at an angle, they like look like um, just like a line with a jaw, um, and that jaw is like far larger for its head than you could even imagine, <laughs> and so it's able to fold it out. Like fold it out and then it's got an elastic mouth um like a pelican it's also sometimes called a pelican eel no way yeah and so it's got this sort of elastic mouth that it does fill with water and um i think i think they actually are able to i think it's like kind of a hunting you know like some some animal like some fish have large mouths and they're able to sort of like suck fish other like animals in oh, to yeah. eat like, like the like the sculpins kind of. and such yeah. i think this is part of it um it's it's i don't think it creates a vacuum but it allows them to eat things that are larger Ooh, um nice. and and it is true because there are not there's not the abundance of um macrofauna yeah um oh fast so yeah. somewhat like a pelican yeah yes exactly like a pel like hmm. that i think that's similar yes i love that wow i love that yeah. Oh, yeah, they're so striking. Uh, Wikipedia says that the color, I mean, uh, the colors on its tails are displayed through light emitting photophores. Ooh, photophores. Presumably to attract prey. Wow. Wow. Makes sense. Gulper eels, fancy. Yeah, makes sense. Fancy gulper eels. Very. Huh? <laughs> I like it. The high tech. Eels. High tech. Yeah. Yeah. That's very cool. Thank you guys. Always, I mean, even in the blue water, even when uh, just staring through the deeps, the ocean is like, always revealing knowledge, stirring it within us. Um, we love having your knowledge also online. We have viewers from all over the world joining us, many different languages, listening in, um, watching along, subtitling. It's just a, a joy to have this global audience of explorers, deep sea travelers with us. 
And uh, we, we know we, we know everyone means to be nice. I was just teasing all of our viewers. Um, we love your comments. Uh, we love your encouragement. We love your knowledge, questions, um, so your stories. So thank you for sharing them with us. Um, always, always a pleasure. Oh, and it does say that they can feed on larvae and marine snow, as well as some of the larger. So you're you're completely right. Kukui. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sounds like they're uh, very highly adaptable. Yes, it does. It does seem like that. It's pretty interesting. We are uh, just passing a thousand meters in depth, uh, you know, about uh, two fifths of our way down to our um, expected deepest depth. Yep, it'll uh, be about 2,500 meters. Yeah, so looking at the, looking at the time, uh, I think we might actually get to see the bottom here well before the end of our watch, which is exciting. I think, I think so. You can expect another hour or so, perhaps, uh, perhaps a little longer, a little bit less, but uh, of blue water. Uh, I don't know. Robert can Robert or Zach could probably tell us uh, how long till we hit bottom, guys. They don't want to tell us. <laughs> <laughs> Fifty more minutes. Oh, I was. They're so close. Wow, I'm getting good at guessing. That's part of learning. You mm -hmm. just get a little bit better and better at guessing. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Slowly. Eventually, you get to the point where you understand pretty well what you don't well, know. Yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> that's right. Amazing. Until suddenly you learn something that just kind of uh, just blows up all your paradigms. Yep. And then you know nothing all over again. Nothing all over again. <laughs> you know, and that's kind of fun. You get to start new. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Those watching online, we're hoping for a wave from the front row. That you know, they're they're quite uh, focused on on their their jobs up there. They've got a lot to do. Um, they love you guys just as much as we do, but um, you know, they're in charge of the controls. It's you know, it's just like asking the person driving the car to turn around and give you a wave. They, yeah, right. <laughs> they got to keep their eyes on the ocean highway, on the Ala Almoana Kaiuli, um, on the Ala Kaiuli, and uh, we're gonna let them do that. But uh, yeah, this is. I've still been thinking exciting. about the mono video that oh, you showed mono, us this evening yeah. too. Shout out to a uh, film created by Brittany Biggs uh, in the UH Creative Media Lab, and, and with the help of the Nakachi Ohana Nakachi, uh, Uncle Mike and Kaikea on Moko I'm sorry. Uh, very, very powerful. It's an incredible animated uh, short film. Uh, been nominated for a lot of awards um, around the world yeah. for film festivals and. Uh, okay. Wow. Uh, I think it's still oh, showing okay. on Hawaiian Airlines. Oh, if you're okay. traveling to or from Hawaii, you can check it out on Hawaiian Airlines. Uh, Did you hear that, You know, media. No. Um, but uh, it's still uh, can't. They're ready for it. They not yet available for publicly, but I still showing in a lot of places. So in a lot of ways, we had a special That's screening done. here on board the Nautilus it is, today. Yeah, it takes a minute. It seemed to, to just come capture, up. capture a it's lot of the questions now. and it topics that we were uh, we've been exploring on this expedition. A lot of the feelings. Very much so. All of it. Yeah. I'm glad you all you all watched that with me. I appreciate you all for uh, joining me in that. It's always nicer to share those things with friends. Especially in the space that Nautilus has given us to have those kinds of conversations. Yeah, absolutely. They have cultivated an amazing space um, for us to just share and share our cultural ties, share our stories. So it is truly a privilege. Um, and I really appreciate Daniel and Megan and the entire OET entity. There you go. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, amazing. It's not the, uh, it's not the typical, uh, you know, this isn't the typical Halle that we might sit under back home on the island. <laughs> the control van with so many screens and so yeah. dark and uh, such a different environment. But uh, mm -hmm. it's become a Halle of sorts. It's become a halal. Uh, it it's does. become a place of learning and, and an incredible house for us. This whole ship, really. Yeah, um, it's, it's so. a very unique environment to work in because, uh, yeah, it's it's a research ship. Uh, science and exploration happen here, but we have we have such a wonderful space to bring culture into that yeah. and seamlessly integrate the two. Yeah, and sometimes not so seamlessly. Sometimes <laughs> it's hard. Sometimes cultures uh, 
Sometimes cultures clash. Sometimes it just requires a lot of forgiveness, a lot of learning, a lot of patience. Um, none and of the work the we're doing. there's the space for that here. Absolutely. Yeah. None of the work we're doing is easy, but we make room for the hard work. So. Yeah. I love it. Because it needs to it. happen. Yeah. A few questions uh, coming in. People um, maybe looking back, maybe they've uh, recently seen the video released about some of the incredible and humbling dives we did on the shipwrecks at the Battle of Midway. And, um, and uh, I, if you haven't seen that, it's an incredible tribute to those um, shipwrecks and to the mission and to the um, collaboration that took place between so many people and agencies and groups and nations um, to make those dives uh, the success that they were. Um, not to mention the um, the gifts bestowed from Kanaloa, from the ocean itself. Just incredible weather and just the exactly right conditions. But some people are still curious about Little Herc. Maybe they, they didn't hear that um, Little Herc has a minor injury that's keeping him out of the game. He's on the injured reserve list <laughs> um, for this cruise. But uh, we, still, we still love Little Herc. He does have incredible camera systems. Uh, Robert, I know, was looking forward to showing the world uh, what they might get to see through the eyes of Little Herc. But... Um, yeah, just uh, uh, just not in the cards this time around. No, nope. um, but still incredible work uh, done. Hey, mission, we made we made it happen. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yes. You know, in Mano, the video that you showed us earlier and shared with us, um, a theme was feeding and respecting Akua and Omakua oh. ancestral spirits, and uh, it's very befitting for tonight. Um, Kaukahoaka i Kapo Mahina, it is the night of the crescent moon, it's the night of Hoaka. Um, and the Ka Makahiki, the year, the lunar year, Hawaiians believed we based our activities, our farming, our fishing off of a 29 and a half day month. Um, and we are actually just starting that that new month. It is the second phase or second Po Mahina of this new month. And Ho'aka is our moon tonight. Oh. Mahalo, Mahina. Our moon. Our moon, and our moon is Mahina Lani tonight. But that's a... Thank you. I was yeah. um, one day off, I guess. I, th I was thinking earlier it was the Hilo moon tonight. Yeah. But Ho'aka tonight. Yeah. Oh, um, awesome. I know. It, it definitely Still tends just a to sliver. Still yeah. Just a still sliver. just a sliver. Um, it is... Still just a sliver. We are actually in the Anahulu phases. So Anahulu, or Anahulu is a phase um, in Olala Hawaii, and then we're in the Anahulu Ho'onui. So as Jan had mentioned earlier, and our Olalo word for the gulper eel, the puhi uh, nui can mean big. So Ho'onui, it's the action to grow bigger. So this is the phase, uh, the phases that the moon will be growing bigger. So for the first 10 days um, of our Hawaiian lunar calendar, the moon is growing bigger. And we are in the second day of that, um, that portion within our month. It's a great time, a good energy as, as the mm -hmm. moon reflects more and more of the sun um, each night. And uh, we make our way to, the, um, to our full moons. Yes. Always, always so beautiful, but sometimes uh, get all the credit. But the moon's always there. It's yep. always there and always pulling on us, always uh, shifting our oceans and our energies and uh, guiding our relationship to the natural world. Yes. Uh, Hawaiians have known that from the beginning, and and uh, I think uh, it's a, it's amazing to watch our scientific understandings catch up to that. But uh, yeah, outstanding. yeah, they were uh, quite the astronomers. Still are. Absolutely. Incredible. Yeah. The sky was uh, just just like the deep ocean. The sky was a library of knowledge for, for the island people of the Pacific. So definitely for the Hawaiians. Yeah, we have a viewer says we're going to miss the Hawaiian culture collaboration with OET since Nautilus will move on out of Hawaiian waters next season. But uh, don't you worry. The, the relationship is not going anywhere. The collaboration is not going anywhere. OET and the community in Hawaii will continue working with each other and will embrace all of the other cultures of the Pacific as Most well definitely. as we expand into their um, working in their waters. So, so excited for um, to learn from the peoples of the Central and Western Pacific as, as Nautilus fo focuses its attention on the deep sea there. So it's all a, mm -hmm. a big uh, Pacific family. A lot of people don't realize, as Mahina's pointed out before, it, the ocean does not divide us, it connects us. We see it as part of us, part of our home. 
um, it's it's uh, foundational for our relationships to one another so don't worry if you're thinking you're gonna miss the Hawaiian collaboration it's uh, it's only gonna grow not gonna yes. go away I'm very glad to hear that yeah. how could it go anywhere so many of the people now running yeah. the show doing all the work logging oh, all the gosh. data <laughs> young Hawaiians so uh, yeah the, it's amazing we talk about uh, a day in the not too distant future when uh, there will be exploration and research vessels that are captained and staffed and crewed by almost entirely uh, indigenous and native Hawaiian and other Pacific Island community members and um, of course everyone will be welcome on those boards will on those, those ships on those vessels and uh, we'll continue to learn together but that's going to be a beautiful, beautiful day when it gets here. Can't wait to see it. Yeah. Just over halfway down to um, our deepest point on this dive and our starting point. It's pretty, is it pretty much always the case that um, just good practice in ROV dives that you're going to, and maybe even in scuba diving as well in some cases, but with ROV dives, we go to our deepest point first and kind of make our way up, especially when we're exploring seamounts. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's uh, better for maneuverability for the ROVs. Uh, it's easier for them to go uphill than uh, downhill. Wow. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yep, we pretty typically start deep, move our way up. It's, yeah, exactly like scuba diving. You uh, start out against the current. Yeah. yeah. So that way, if you need to, you can drift home. Don't have to work too hard. Get back home. Yep. Because that's the thing with scuba diving. Sometimes you don't always realize uh, how tired you are until uh, it hits. <laughs> so it's time to get up on the boat. And I, yeah, I, I remember diving in Curacao. Um, yeah. Part of my, uh, for one of my grad school field courses, you know, we'd, we'd get up out after our dive and it'd be like, oh, cool, see this and that and the other thing. and. You know, uh, as, as kind of the high of that wore off and, you know, our, our systems readjusted to being back on land, we'd be driving back to where we were staying and everybody in the car would fall Collapse. asleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know that experience well. Mm -hmm. uh, Better than the, I do. I'm often the angry driver. <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> Come on. Come on, everybody. Because you I, want your nap, too. Yeah. I remember one time we had to, on the big island, for one of our scuba diving classes, we had to go to a different beach all the way on the... Past South Point, oh, um, wow. Pebble Beach. Oh wow! Yeah, and it was because of the way the wind and the waves that were going on in Kauai High, where we normally dive. And so we had to drive through Volcano all the way over there. And then instead of going up south, we have to go all the way around the other side by Homokua, so we don't get bent because Saddle Road is so high in elevation. Too high elevation. Oh, yeah. And right, I just right. felt I remember seeing feeling so bad because I wasn't band certified, but my colleague was, so oh. she was the one who had to drive all the time. One more time for Yeah. <laughs> I tried my best. I tried my best. But oh. it was I feel that it was a long a long one. I do, I do like that road. Saddle Road is so much faster, but oh, the road Saddle up road on the Hamakua nice. coast and uh, but it does stopping. take you up high, so yeah, yeah, good does. safety thing. <laughs> yeah, like when we were when we were in Curacao, we had to have at least 24 hours before we got in our plane with no dives for the exact same reason. Yeah, so that's right. you got to keep everybody safe and healthy. Exactly. Robert, the internet wants to know if you found your found any cookies today. <laughs> <laughs> by by the way, Internet, Robert knows who you are. You're anonymous. To, you're anonymous to us, but uh, it's, a, it's a cheese person. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, the internet's in trouble. <laughs> Front row, you, you're doing a great job, just dropping down in the drink, taking us down to into the depths uh, safely. You know, soon to pass 1,400 meters. But what's on the mind? What's it's. Uh, after two weeks on board in Papua Hanau Mokuakea, Catalina, any anything uh, anything stirring in you? Any any new thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think um, you know we're constantly reminded of just you know the sanctity of this place, and I think having come off the dives on the um, you know the ships from the Battle of Midway, I think we all needed a little bit of a a reset, um, and I think we all really enjoyed the dive yesterday. Um, but we were also given, I think, an important reminder that it's also, you know, while enjoying yourself, it's also important to um, enjoy it with the utmost respect. Um, yeah, because, right. yeah, we're taking from a place that yeah, means a lot. It does mean a lot, yeah, absolutely. Mahalo for articulating that so well. 
Mahina, you've been guiding us for these past two weeks and reminding us of where we are in Pole, Papahanao Mokuakea. It's a sacred realm that uh, all of the ancestors and uh, all of the future generations hanging out waiting here to come into Ao. Um, yeah, it's amazing. Amazing to think of all of life. Uh, yeah, I, you know, and Dan and I were having a great conversation earlier with some of our other crew members and um, it can be hard to articulate some of these things, especially how we feel it as Kanako Eevee, as, as people of these islands, of these Paiaina, um, this archipelago, and to have deep roots here. But it also just kind of simmers down to what you find in your own life is sacred, um, what you find is important. And that's not something that I can define for any of my crew members. That's not something I could define for anyone else but myself. Those are questions that I have to look in, look inside and internally ask myself, what do I value? Um, and a lot of these things, you know, we're preconditioned uh, through adolescence. We come into this world, you know, with ideas of and beliefs inherited, uh, some maybe, but of what is sacred to us, um, what is important to us, and how we should live our lives uh, with that in mind. Um, you know, some people will see a cathedral as a sacred space, um, will act reverently toward that, but as Kanako Eevee, we see that cathedral in the Kaiuli, in the ocean depths. Uh, we see that cathedral in the Kohivi, in the mountain tops, where and these spaces, these that are inhospitable and difficult for humans to even venture out into, we see, we recognize these as wo akua. These are realms of our gods. Um, they're realms where our gods live and where we only come to visit when we're privileged to come um, and enter this space upon permission. And when we come into this space, we are not meant to be here for long periods of time. Uh, it's believed that we enter humbly, we learn, we be enlightened by the lessons that we are revealed, and then we leave respectfully and take all of those lessons, take all of that ike, that knowledge, the mana'o, the thoughts along um, our journey back to our communities, back to our homes, back to our ohana, our families, and we are better because of those experiences. Well said. Amber, our amazing video engineer, what's been what's been uh, on your mind? What have you been thinking about as we you know we get to play around? We got to take care of ourselves. Got the daily ship life. We get to have some fun together, watching movies together, um, having these deep conversations together, but also doing your job so well, and um, that that takes a lot of effort, but. Uh, What's kind of standing out to you as, as we've been uh, out here in Papahanaumokuakea the last couple of weeks? Well, I've really been enjoying uh, just making a connection with my shipmates, um, just hearing their stories and learning from them. Uh, it's been a real privilege, especially to be able to witness and be a part of some of the, the cultural uh, significance of this place. Uh, and then just seeing this abundant life here, it's just uh, That's right. such lost for words. It's just so incredible. You can't describe it. I really did almost have to run out of the van last night. It was uh, I, it was part out of just pure reverence for what we were seeing and, and part just because I felt like I was at risk of getting sucked into some kind of wormhole to a distant <laughs> part of the universe. It was uh, so amazing. In some ways I think we did. <laughs> I think yes. we did. <laughs> Re-emerged uh, from the changed. dream yes. uh, after watch, but it was... Uh, just so special, yeah, absolutely. It's it really a, was. It's amazing. I don't know, ROV pilots, you guys have been really busy working hard, flying your ROVs around in the deep sea, bringing us these amazing views. But uh, Zach, Robert, any uh, any any thoughts from you? How does how does how are you guys feeling after uh, making it past the halfway mark of this Ala Moana Kaiuli expedition? Um. I'm enjoying it. I'm really enjoying it, honestly. Um, I've been talking to my daughter every day, so it's making me miss her. But, yeah. you know, I'm still enjoying my time out here. And, you know, my, my name is missing my daughter. 
Yeah, I feel you. I feel you, How Zach. We, your little one? Yeah, we should talk about our kids a little yeah. bit more. I'm missing mine and <laughs> my son's birthday's tomorrow, as I think I shared on um, on SBL last night. And just uh, wishing he could be here with me in this place. It feels like uh, such a gift, and I'm excited to to come back home and share it with them, him and him and my daughter, and whole, all our family and friends. But yeah, definitely never easy for a dad to be away from his daughter. Robert, how about you? You got, I saw you got some Oreos today. You might not have got freshly baked cookies, but you, you know, got some Oreos. Yeah, <laughs> I got Oreos. <laughs> <laughs> What's been on your mind, Robert? You have so much time in the deep sea. It's, you've had just a remarkable, a remarkable life exploring this place. And, and yet I've also heard you say that this, some of the stuff we've done on this expedition does seem pretty special. What's your, what's your take on it so far? Yeah, obviously they the see the midway. You know that's pretty spectacular stuff. That's <coughs> hopefully something we can showcase at the at our facility in San Pedro. Yeah, we have some some murals and things that you know. Now we have some video. I don't know. Are, are we? Is the story out to the world? Is it like somebody talking about it? Well, we, we have released a, a video online. So we have a video on YouTube on the Nautilus side, and I believe I heard it's gonna air, so a story about it will air tonight in, in Hawaii. Um, so pretty pretty cool, pretty cool. Maybe I'm not supposed to say that, I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> See, I don't sorry, know what's sorry, secret Megan. and what's not. Sorry, so. Megan. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, man. it's never clear. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we, uh, we're, yeah, we're I think that video isolated. is out. The video is out. The video is an incredible tribute video or kind of recap summary video of the three dives. You can can hear the voices of many of our scientists or archaeologists ashore, uh, many of the team here in the control van, um, just processing that and, and uh, reflecting back on what we were witnessing. And um, it will, I think, as... as uh, as our as our good shipmate friend and shipmate Hans uh, von Tilburg uh, says in that video, it's it's an experience we'll we'll likely never forget. So, uh, and I think we, we pretty much all. So agree that's with on that. our website. It is, yeah, it's up. Oh, okay. It's uh, head over to YouTube and uh, as well as the amazing. We're not allowed video. to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the audience can. We can't because it uh, eats up our bandwidth. Yeah. I heard uh, I heard some some rumblings that uh, we had uh, over 80,000 people join us from around the world uh, over the course of those three dives, uh, wow. maybe more. But that's uh, Which is just we, amazing. We know it meant a lot to people. And and as I was reflecting on the other video we were watching, just thinking about how much the story of this um, collaboration and experience, and watching so many young Hawaiians, um, incredibly brilliant young Hawaiians uh, coming out here into the monument to, to do the work to care for it um, in collaboration with Ocean Exploration Trust and Nautilus. I think that's, uh, that video is also going to touch so many lives. That was a beautiful um, tribute um, and story of a legacy that, uh, as we talked about earlier, isn't, isn't ending. It's not going anywhere. Um, I, would, uh, I would bet anybody you know, you'll find, uh, you'll find kukuis and you'll find mahinas on board. <laughs> Um, this ship for a long time into the future, so yeah, no doubt about it. Robert, um, what was that long word that you shared with us? <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> the longest word. The right? longest Mary word. Yeah. Word. yeah, we were talking about the yeah lung disease you get from, from the volcanic ash. So it's uh, yeah longest word in the English language. It's the mono ultra microscopic silico volcano coniosis. Wow. Coniosis. Wow. Oh my goodness. Well, I hope none of us ever get that because yeah. I wouldn't want to have to keep saying it. But, or try to spell that. Yeah. <laughs> I think most of you will probably not have to worry about it. I'm the one who actually has a probably <laughs> a risk factor for it. That's true. <laughs> Wear the right gear, Dr. Zoll. Yep. Fortunately, you're working in the submarine environment a lot of times, so that's... Uh, yeah, I tend not to good. breathe ash in a submarine environment. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, that's right. A wealth of knowledge in the deep sea, in the universe, uh, and in Robert Waters, um, and in everyone here in the control van. So, love learning with you guys. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, we're getting closer. I'm really, I'm really eager, but I'm also just thinking, you know, this one really just has to be lame. Just there has to be. This one just can't be good. We d we have to. You can't. Everyone can't be amazing. It's not right. It's not fair. You know, I kind of agree because <laughs> we're sending really like crazy expectations to people. I know. <laughs> and, like, like no, like really, like while yes, this area is absolutely amazing and stunning and beautiful, it's also completely ordinary. You yeah. know, like yeah. it is. There are, it, it is awe-inspiring even when it's not this abundance, yeah. you know, and when it's not a Dumbo octopus and when it's not like, you know, um, crazy cultural and historical references. Like this, this space and these seamounts we're going to are, they are regularly beautiful and enlightening um, in so many different ways. Absolutely. And sometimes it, it doesn't, it's not colorful you know sometimes <laughs> sometimes it doesn't always make the highlight real but it is it is always Sacred. yeah and yeah. it's um and i think that's also important too you know um, so we hope we'll, you'll stay with us even if we get down there and it looks like uh you know an interstate um <laughs> and uh we won't because this place is is just filled with so much life but uh, even if there isn't much there to see yeah. besides rocks we'll love which it. i'm always okay with but we'll love um, it. that that tells another part of the story an important story and right. you know that's that's kind of what my research is partly into in, in different ways because you know I, I look at the compositions of uh things erupted out of the mantle and you know a lot of us being human uh love outliers we love extreme mm -hmm. compositions and those tend to get oversampled and over reported but one thing that does get overlooked sometimes are the uh, the volcanoes, the plumes that kind of have these compositions that are unremarkable. And there's actually a lot of really interesting things to learn about those. Mm -hmm. A lot of stories that aren't yet told. And, you know, be, you have to come at the perspective that sometimes boring is interesting too. You know, you, you need that to offset the spectacular. So if that's what we find, I'm going to have a grand time with this. You know, there's there's always something to see. Yeah. It just may not be what, you know, we expect. It may not be yesterday's. I mean, it's almost 100% sure it's not going to be yesterday's, but it'll be its own thing in its own right. And I'm here for it. Yeah. Whatever yeah. it is, I'm, I'm glad to be exploring it with you guys. Ale, for sure. Well said, though. All right. Where to send in Nautilus fan art? Anybody want, to, uh, want me to share their email? <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> not going to do that to you. Not going to do that to you. But uh, in all seriousness, we're so um, amazed to have incredible fans who uh, do are so talented in so many different I, ways. I would so. say uh, the the press email oh. might be a place to go for Give that. Give it a shot. Give it a shot. What is oh. that? Press. It might be press at uh, I don't know. OceanExplorationTrust.org. That's probably yeah. it. Yes. Give it um. a try. <laughs> press. If that doesn't work, you can uh, you can try education. Um, you can try communications. <laughs> is Dr. Val's office full of rocks? <laughs> so is my brain. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, an impressive that's electrical rock setup you got up there. It's doing some fancy knowledge building and knowledge sharing. Really amazing still. I'm just blown away learning so much. Uh, coming to think about, talking about fan art, um, just want to let you know you can pre-order Isotope stories, uh, sending a donation, thirteen ninety nine. Um, but yeah. also, you have but, a price, but, but you haven't even written it. <laughs> I mean, I, you could be I've underselling making, yourself. I've been making some progress. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, based on what I have so far, thirteen ninety nine seems like a pretty fair price. Uh, but okay. it's, uh, but we haven't seen what uh, Dr. Val's contributions are going to be just yet. Uh. So, um, and uh, the price might go up depending on how much she decides. It should. I mean, honestly. My knowledge is pretty comes pretty cheap, but not Dr. I don't Bell's. think it should. Hey. Okay, well, uh, all right. Sorry, said, Internet, you're about to, the price is about to go up, so you have about <laughs> one day left, this pre-order <laughs> sale. Get it in now. But uh, uh, just speaking of... I'm still not sure how this happened. <laughs> <laughs> you got stuck on a watch with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, I'll, I'll accept that. And the but email is press at oet.org. Press ah. at oet, easier. A lot easier. <laughs> awesome. Thank Sorry, you. press sure at so dot work. <laughs> I am, I apologize in advance. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> to be fair, it is it is on the internet. Yeah. It is on the internet. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, we but have yeah. a sticker contest every year. Oh, oh really? We yeah. should talk about that. Yeah, yeah every sticker. expedition season uh, oh, sends us a call a for, for this for season. Yeah. Sticker, actually, patch. Really? Patch for, you, gotta, uh, you gotta talk to Megan. Yeah, it's yeah. Made, uh, they, I have they, last year's patch on my bag, and I have a spot waiting for this year's patch. Uh, <laughs> there is one. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's very. I well will done. have to go rectify that problem. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh my goodness! I think it's there it is on the yeah what? on the uh, the badge or sticker that we get for this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Patch design contest under Nada's Web Education. Here we go. Oh, students' age is five to eighteen. Yeah. So I, I can't see <laughs> that. Oh, shit. I mean, you can still okay. submit. You'll just be Five disqualified. Eight, I just you know what? I'll just get my nephew to do it. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> we'll see what <laughs> you can uh, have it uh, uh, submitted as a cover design for uh, Isotope Stories. Oh, uh, there we're you looking, go. We're looking yeah. for a cover. <laughs> Illustrator. Uh, too much fun. Um, but yeah, the art, the science of it, all of it, it's just... Uh, just incredible. They all sort of have these these fuzzy edges where they overlap. Yeah, it was beautiful in the the video we were referencing earlier. One of our friends and, and colleagues, Hoku, who um, such an incredible scientist and artist and communicator, was a past science communication fellow on board um, Nautilus. Talked about uh, you know one of the outcomes of these expeditions. It would it's not just. Um, she said p-values, but it's not just the, the analytics. It's not the results from the data right. that gets processed in, um, you know, the methods of, of traditional Western science, but in traditional indigenous and Hawaiian science that, that the science gave rise to mele, gave rise to songs, it gave rise to oli, it gave rise to chants, to olelo no iau, to proverbs. Um, it gave rise to different ways of being, different mm -hmm. dances, different stories, ways of passing on knowledge that were um, just as powerful, if, if, if perhaps not, not sometimes at least more powerful. And so it's an uh, incredible opportunity to uh, think about bridging and, yeah. and integrating and finding synergies between these ways of, of sharing Very much knowledge. So. Yes. Um, you know, it's, it's a middle ground, it's a common ground, it's an area where we exchange information, where we communicate, and that is, you know, having that space, creating that space, it creates healthy pilina, healthy relationships, and with those relationships, with those collaborations, you here have witnessed, we all have witnessed what that does, and, you know, just by the dives that we are able to execute, the marine archaeolog archaeological dives, I mean, that's a uh, that's healthy evidence of a pilina, a very strong relationship, uh, the relationship between OET and the Native Hawaiian community, the cultural working group, Papa Hanamoka Kea Marine National Monument. I mean, these are all things, and relationships take time, they take trust. Um, and, you know, there's, it's, it can be difficult for organizations and entities to put forth that effort and energy, especially to, indigenous communities I feel it's not it hasn't been a standard or a norm in the past and so to be a young Kanaka and to witness um, you know this building of relationships developing this pilina um, this closeness you know across organizations across cultures across communities um, it gives me a lot of hope because I feel within that space within that common ground of compromise um, of healthy communication and learning and sharing, we'll be able to resolve some of our our issues that we're facing globally. Hey, oh. You know, it uh, reminds me of a story, a canoe story, of a story, and of course, uh, exploration vessel Nautilus is just another va. Mm -hmm. um, and these are places of uh, profound learning, and and the learning doesn't just come from our pilina with nature or incredible pilina with the stars and being able to navigate. Um, but it comes from being on board with your crew and with each other. And there's a story of Havailoa sailing to Tahiti um, and just making incredible time. Havailoa is a, is a canoe built from two Sitka spruce logs gifted to the Hawaiian people uh, from our Southeast Alaskan uh, friends and uh, cousins, um, uh, some, of the, some of whom uh, Mahina got to visit just, uh, just a couple of months ago. And, oh, cool. And uh, on board Hokulea as, as Hoku sails on, on the Moana Nui Akea voyage um, for one earth, for one ocean. 
and it just reminds me of this uh, the story the story in short goes that they made incredible time in fact they made unbelievable time nobody could believe that they sailed from hawaii to tahiti in just over two weeks it's one of the wow. fastest uh, fastest trips to tahiti um on a on a sailing vessel ever recorded and uh and they were asking some of the crew members how they did it and they said uh, lokahi you're getting another hawaiian word those who are asking for hawaiian mm -hmm. words of the day it's one of the aloha values um, and it means unity it means when when people come together to accomplish something and and uh the story from that crew member uh, from junior on board he said the canoe flew the canoe just flew and it wasn't the canoe it wasn't the ocean it wasn't the conditions it was it was what was happening between the people on board it was the lokahi and and their and their relationship you know with the canoe and with the ocean and with the stars when those things come into alignment and we become one then we fly you know yeah. and uh in some ways it feels like nautilus is flying and um, mm -hmm. that's always that's always fun but we that's how we know if we're doing things the right way if we're if we're pono um, if we're balanced, if we're finding, if we're, we're making the right path, uh, we know because uh, we start to fly, yeah, yeah. and uh, you you find lokahi uh, and aloha. So uh, really, really beautiful to be experiencing that on board this modern, modern va'a with all of you. Lo this lokahi that that uh, we are a part of and the aloha that we share, um, and yeah, also sending it to our. To our uh, crewmates and friends, shout out to Hokulea crew. They're making their way um, down the Northern California coast. I think arriving in San Francisco shortly. Crazy. Yeah, maybe already. I don't know. Yeah. It's got to be coming up, so coming up soon. So um, our hearts are with them, and, and our hearts are with uh, all of our all of our ohana, all of our community in Paiaina, across Paiaina, across Hawaii, especially our community in Lahaina, community in Maui. Um, we love you and we miss you so much, and. Uh, um, we know that uh, from here in a place in Pohl, um, we know that when we come home, we will be better, even better to uh, um, to, to help continue the, the healing and the growth, the renewal that's uh, that's taking place there in the community. So, um, yeah, lokahi, another Hawaiian word of the day. Beautiful word, yeah. How many Hawaiian words of the day are we going to have? So Hawaiian, we got so many words. <laughs> Can we have all of them? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, not from me, unfortunately. I'm uh, fairly limited. Um, I love listening to Kukui and Mahina yeah. and, and others on board who's uh, uh, given their Olelo Hawaii practice more time and attention than I have. But uh, oh. I'm, I'm picking up. I think I'm at about 180 something days on Duolingo. Nice. Six months. Six months yeah. straight. Oh, make it Oh my God, I'm trying. I'm trying. Got a long way to go. Me too. I mean, I am still very much a homana, a student, especially in Olalo Hawaii. And this morning, uh, Kukui and I, and even Malia Evans on board, we did a Punana Leo, a preschool in Waialua on the north shore of Oahu. Uh, we spoke to them, and you know, showed them the Puhi Wahanui, the Gopher Eel. But it was amazing to just see language and to see, you know, our young very young Kiki use it um, but I'm sure Kukui has mana'o on that if you'd like to share Aloha, aloha. Uh, yeah it was such a blessing to be able to um, be able to talk with these these young Kiki these young children with you folks and to hear some of their mana'o and to see how they kind of react um, to something that is you know not seen every day not seen every day by our kahakai by the shores that we go to every day and I remember a couple of the young ones just came up to the camera and we were showing them um, the whale fall with all the octopus in it. And just, um, I couldn't quite uh, under, understand the reaction when, I was when we were trying to share with them, um, you know, how I was using Daniel's words, how he explained the whale fall and how he explained, you know, how things are feeding on each other, that they're exchanging life, they're exchanging energy. And it's just, it's just so amazing to see their eyes kind of light up with wonder. And even though they didn't have any questions in particular, you could tell that they were engaged. You can tell that they, they were genuinely wondrous. They were genuinely wondering like, what is this environment? Why, how come we don't see this every day? By our by our shores, so it's just beautiful to kind of, even though they didn't express it verbally, um, from what I hear, I'm also very much a homana, and my understanding of the Olalo Hawaii language is something I need to work on it. But from just by looking from their eyes um, and their reactions to it, they 
they're they're already connected to it because it's in their cocoa, it's in their blood, and so it's just beautiful. And uh, also Kalamai Mahina, I might have written all over the back of the list of the Huololo <laughs> words that we have um, for the yeah. that is purely to or connected to deep sea exploration. But we also got to talk to uh, Navahio Kalanio Pu'u, a uh, Kulakayo Puni school on uh, Mokokeawe on the Big Island. Um, and they're Papa Ekolu, uh, third graders. And so we showed them the Chana Cops fish. And I don't believe there's a Ololo Hawaii word for it yet. Um, but each of them who had Mana'o got a chance to come up to the camera and express what they thought um, that fish's name could be. And so there is so many different um, words that they, that they had in mind. Uh, some of them said trash can fish. Um, some of them um, said pokey fish. Some of them, what, this one um, name also um, stood out to me. It was, um, they knew it was from the angler family. And so they, I believe one of the words they said, also my hearing isn't too good too, like on a kuli kuli ko upepeo. And um, but so, but what I thought I heard was um, hei ga ipukukui. And so that kind of was oh. like, oh, okay, because oh, that, I, I, yeah, oh. that Kiki knew that that fish was from the angler family, and usually, you know, angler fish have you know that light that yeah. like comes down, and so ipukukui means means light, like means like a lamp, it means like uh, ipu is like a gourd or a container, and kukui means light, and so. Um, I feel like that's uh, one of the characteristics of the angler fish family, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And so the Chana Cops being a relative of that family or within that family itself, um, that, that Kiki knew it. And so he was in, um, their teacher asked them to um, express it in Olala Hawaii. And so just being able to see him um, getting to make that pilina, that connection between both worlds, it's, wow. it's amazing. And, at such a young age too, I'm like, oh my gosh. Whoa, that, that's actually, because I'm even imagining Chana Cops and like, you know, with the little light in front of their bodies, they're so, they're very round heads, right? And Aye. and uh, and it's a, a lot like Opu. And yeah. so it's like, Opu Kukui, hey, that's what it is. It's right there, I can see it. <laughs> you know, but in, and it just, oh, so clever. I love that one. Yeah. That's a great example. That's great. There's also uh, Opoi Poi too. Like the one of the kids came up and they were, they looked at the fish. They're like, "E o poi poi." I'm like, "I hey o poi poi no oh, okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Very gosh. round fish indeed. <laughs> they are funny. very round. That is funny. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what they do. If I show up on the screen, oh, oh no, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a round one. No, it's awesome. Wow, thanks for sharing that. I'm so glad we got to do those interactions. It's incredible to. Uh, to be able to connect with schools around the world, but especially when we connect with Keiki back home um, in our own communities. I believe Malia had uh, some some Mo'upuna or some, some of her own family members, uh, descendants in the, in the class too. So what a gift to uh, to stay connected in that way. And yeah, I really, really love that. And yeah, I, I think if we, uh, you know, if we if we allow the, the young ones to, uh, to, to speak the new names into existence for this this new world, this new Hawaiian, this world that they're coming to understand, then uh, they're going to take care of it for for a long time. I understand how important it is, and mm -hmm. I know they look up a lot to uh, to Yukukui and Mahina and mm -hmm. um, the whole crew that's on there. It's pretty pretty awesome. So yeah, so that personal investment is everything. Yeah. You know, well, we are getting closer. Uh, I think probably coming within, uh, I'm, I'm guessing again, but probably 10 minutes or so, 10, 10 or 15 minutes of the bottom, maybe less. But uh, about one minute actually. It's been a, it's been a great, been a great ride down with all of yeah. you in blue water, and excited mm -hmm. to see what we're gifted with here from Kanaloa in yeah. a short amount of time. Kind of continuing on the. Mana'o, the thought of Olalo Hawai'i, of Hawaiian language. I'm currently reading a book called Finding Meaning, Kauna and Contemporary Hawaiian Literature by Brandy Nalani McDougall. And there's actually an excerpt from Anake uh, Antipualani Kanakaole Kanahele. Um, and she says, we as native Hawaiians must continue to unveil the knowledge of our ancestors. Let us interpret for ourselves who are our ancestors, how they thought and why they made certain decisions. In the process, we treat them with honor, dignity, love, and respect. Whether they be akua, gods, ali'i, nobility, or kanaka, 
Because they are our ohana, our family. And that's from Kahonua. Oh, I love it. Perfect. Oh, empty pool, Kanahele. Mahalo. I believe had a large role in kind of establishing the practice of makavalu um, as well. Uh, and uh, uh, it's incredible kind of and literally translates to eight eyes but uh, uh, is a is a Hawaiian term that I only have a very uh, shallow understanding of but uh, part of the kona there is to the layered meanings of things and that we keep reaching into looking at things from new perspectives and um, when we go into the deep, I think uh, it, uh, we we experience, and you know, you've spoken about it many times, Mahina, these layers of the kaiuli, the different shades of blue, the different kinds of knowledge that come to us, and sometimes that knowledge is, um, you know, uh, isotope uh, readings, <laughs> isotope readings from the analysis in the labs, but sometimes yep. it's uh, it's something deep inside of us that we we uh, can only explain as as the presence of our ancestors. Um, and the whole range, all of that, um, can live uh, in in a single in a single object or a single situation. So we always, I like to always encourage uh, any helmana I'm working with, makavalu, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, makavalu. sometimes I don't really feel much of a separation between those two. Yeah. Yeah, you kind of get a feel for it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. There are stories on more canoe stories. I won't tell too many more because we're running out of time. We'll be on the bottom, but uh, and I'm. I'm I hope people are, are uh, at least entertained, but hopefully find meaning in them as, you know, it's uh, sometimes uh, on the canoe, young navigators, young voyagers will get so caught up in trying to do, use the right techniques and use all the right understandings that they've been taught. And our uncles uh, who have taught us will sit back, <laughs> will sit back and just go, you gotta feel it. You got it after they've taught us all of these very, you know, precise techniques and star lines and all of these things you're supposed to know on the canoe. And then they say, ah, sometimes you got to put some of those things away and it's just got to, you got to let the ancestors guide you. You got to let yeah. the ocean guide you. And it's really, really incredibly frustrating and, uh, and so important, so beautiful. There's, there's no better way to, um, to teach that reality than the way they do it on the va'a, in my opinion. So, mm -hmm. so, so thankful for those kinds of lessons and, uh, yeah, really, really spectacular. So sometimes you you can find your way to the answer that you need, um, even in, in ways that are h really hard to explain. They're just they're, yep. they're just feelings. They're just deep inside you. So awesome. Very much so. Yeah. There is an art to science. Yeah, hundred percent. The two don't have to be separate. And they cannot be if they're going to be done. Be. If they're going to be done well, it cannot be. Yeah, and, and, and known across so many uh, traditions. Uh, was it was it Richard Feynman, physicist? I, I think it was. I think Richard was his name. But uh, Feynman talked about you know how beautiful it is to see a flower, for example, not just as this beautiful artwork for the aesthetic beauty of this flower, but to also study it, mm -hmm. to understand how it works, to know that flower so even more intimately. And you might know it if you're a painter or a photographer who's just admiring the physical beauty. Um, that's important as well, but uh, also to understand how these things. And I think a lot about that um, that way of thinking when I when we uh, uh, when we think about our own sampling, our own venturing into the deep here, and and honoring what's down here for its beauty, for its role, for its uh, status as kopuna, um, uh, status as almakua, status as akua. Um, all the stuff in this deep kaiuli um, is a treasure, is sacred, um, and uh, what a gift for it to be offered to us um, so that we can even have more intimate knowledge of it, you know, even deeper pilina, deeper relationship, mm -hmm. and we've been talking about that as a crew, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's good for, um, for the community online to know as well that that's, you know, these are the kinds of conversations. We, of course, also talk about, you know, <laughs> the washing machine not working <laughs> and who ate all the cookies and all that stuff too, but uh, no, and uh, Honduran independence which we yes. need to rem remember to uh, um, celebrate in some form or another it was, yeah, was today definitely. it was today so mm -hmm. Jorge and Ronald and our Honduran friends that is a very special day we get to talk about all kinds of things but uh, we also talk about this sort of stuff the work that we're doing how we can do it better 
um, and uh, these kinds of things are part of that conversation. So, yeah, awesome. And and uh, Robert, uh, some of your fans online w wanted to share a Hawaiian word of the day with you. Um, I'm not sure you'll know what it means, but you can try to guess. It's kuki. Kuki. <laughs> <laughs> heard that word. The internet always comes through. The internet viewers. always comes through. <laughs> Outstanding. <laughs> uh, wow, we're, we're getting close. Robert, what's what's uh, what's the what's time? The, what's the data telling us that we're gonna we're gonna make make a touchdown here? Uh, yeah, we slowed way down because I was I had to lateral over a bit. Oh, good. So, it's yeah. always fun. Yeah, soon. Good. I like, <laughs> I like it. No, no promises. Just soon. That's a good. That's a good answer. We're a couple hundred meters away. Yeah, making our way down. Yep. Do you want to just start wherever we land, or do you want to pull us back to that waypoint? What do you think? I don't know. I think it's That's okay. That's a science question. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I've, been, I've been told the waypoints, at least the starting one, can be a little fluid. If, if that's okay with you guys. Just no, we're as long as we're pretty close to the ridge, um, fine by me. Okay. Yeah, we'll definitely be on the ridge. Okay. Yeah, so that's, maybe that's cool. Maybe not at this exact depth. We're going to be slightly up. Okay. Yeah, that, that should be fine. Like, cool. This is a this is a very uh, ridgy seamount, so there. Uh, my guess is there's probably going to be a lot of stopping to look at things. Right. Yeah, this one actually has a uh, summit fairly deep, only about 1470 meters if I remember correctly okay so uh, it doesn't get as shallow climb. as yesterday's yeah it was a long climb yesterday it was a, it was long, a long climb. track but uh, a lot uh, of current worth every <laughs> worth every second for sure but that uh, was a long one yeah that was a gnarly current wow. to try to drive with yesterday we should have quite a bit more time and it was a long it was a long dive but quite a bit more time to hopefully hang out do some exploring there were some yeah. We encountered uh, quite a few Dumbo octopus, which are big fan favorites. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, really, really, fifty meters always away. Always nice to yes. spend time <laughs> with them. I figured it was we, I was introduced to the tumbling snail on yesterday's <sighs> dive, tumbling which snail. was oh, wonderful. Lovely. Those were spectacular, brave. My new favorite animal. Yeah, <laughs> pretty fun. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know it's flight response and. Uh, that that snail is moving to protect itself from us, but um, I, I'm just absolutely enthralled by it. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's really, a, I mean, it's and when you're in the deep sea, right? You don't have to do that much. It's already so dark, hard to find things. I imagine seems that way to me, anyways. Um, it's our perception, yeah. But uh, but yeah, you just you just jump off and then roll down, and you're good. You get yeah. away. <laughs> I've never seen a snail move that fast, yeah, and I love it. Was, that was fun. Amazing creatures, incredible adaptations. Nature has so much to teach us. Um, you know, as a as a fan and a practitioner of biomimicry, technological and systemic innovation inspired by the natural world, we love looking at places like the deep sea, where um, animals have been under such interesting constraints, um, you know, for so long, but have evolved to just fit perfectly in their environments, which is true in all environments, but the conditions of of the deep sea are um, especially intriguing. So mm -hmm. uh, really, really fun to uh, look at the way that um, that nature adapts. I know I've, I've been uh, doing my best to pay attention to that and learn from that. Yeah, me too. There's a lot of lessons to learn there. This is, uh, we're, we're just a couple hundred meters from um, from uh, coming down on Seamount number 11. Seamount number 11. Previously unmapped. 
uh, still unexplored, won't be explored till we get there um, in just a few minutes, uh, has never been seen um, as far as we know, but uh, we just mapped it. Uh, Catalina and the other team, mappers and navigators uh, down in the data lab processing our, our sonar data, turning it into awesome 3D maps and uh, useful tools for dive planning and exploration. And, um, and that's, yeah. uh, so we spent a lot of today uh, mapping over the seamount uh, and got some really interesting morphology out of it. So as we were yeah. mentioning earlier, this one is a... Uh, this one does not have a flat top. It is not a geo. It is basically all ridge ridges and has a pretty interesting morphology to it. So it doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't shallow as much as uh, yesterday's. So it'll probably be a completely different dive. Excellent. Yeah. Looking forward to that. I think uh, we've seen a few tinafores and some uh, fish on the way down, but it's pretty much been it so far. There was, I thought I saw like a Medusa jelly, like a long purple jelly. With, Ooh. Yeah. I missed that. It, I got a picture of it, but it's super blurry. So oh I no. Kinda, yeah. Yeah, they moved through the field of view so quickly in the water column. But it was purple and fantastic. I love it. <laughs> yeah, the jellies and the medusas are pretty spectacular. Would you be a sea jelly or a tinafor? I don't know. Tinafor. Tinafor. <laughs> I want to be a jelly. How do you even make that decision? Ooh. What happened? Do you want what are the factors in the decision making? Yeah, around how do you yeah. make that decision? Do you want stinging nematocysts or sticky cells? Yeah. <laughs> mm. Stinging. <laughs> um. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it was what I did here. So there's there. Um, so what I am also doing, though, is I'm thrusting, and that's a lot of power. So, so, so there could be some electrical noise associated with that if you saw some glitchiness. Uh. Yeah, it wasn't definitely wasn't what I did here. But um, when I move the sticks, this is a big change in, in how much current we're drawing. So that is that is a big difference. Like, so whatever Robert did, it wasn't his fault. See, that's like, that's right. that's like 15 amps, 480 <laughs> volts. So. Oh, that's a lot of amps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, apparently somehow uh, the nav screens took over Amber's computer there for a second. It just like flashed over there. Oh, wild. It. I don't know. Do we have a ghost in the machine? Gremlins. <laughs> I think that was an X Files episode. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I still love that. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, yeah, we we did we did mess around with it significantly this expedition, so there are probably still some gremlins. We'll find them and chase them out. What were you messing around with? <laughs> <laughs> Just the computer gremlins, Robert. Don't uh, worry about it. Okay. Don't worry about it. Uh, Just your old friends inside the computer. Don't feed them after midnight. <laughs> well, though one could argue it isn't a computer without gremlins. Yeah. How else is supposed to move little ones and zeros around? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like a multi-collector on any given day. <laughs> There's certain things you just don't say in front of it because you know it's just going to hear that and do the opposite. That's right. <laughs> you want a one? I'll give you three zeros. <laughs> oh, you said that I was behaving well all day. Well, here, try this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Complex machinery, man. 
little haze, a little slippery. Yeah. Slippery beings, these computers. Yeah, precision instrumentation. It does a lot of good, but it does need a lot of attention and upkeep. It does. All right, I'm getting getting pretty excited. Me too. I think we should be not exactly sure if we'll be acquiring the bottom, but with, in terms of depth, within a hundred within a hundred meters. I so still can't decide what kind of jellyfish. <laughs> oh, jellies are pretty pretty beautiful. They are. I love the man of wars. I heard someone call them empanadas. <laughs> What? Oh, Sebastian. Sebastian, yeah. <laughs> you know how they have the, you know they have the little on their little. What's the mantle? Is that what it's called? Of a of a of a man of war. Yes. Their body. Yeah. 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 It's kind of empanada shape. <laughs> okay, I can I can see that. It was the coloration on the puzzle. That's what it that, was. That oh, ah. got it. Yeah, I've seen them floating around research ships every now and again. Not very frequently. Yeah. Empanadas. <laughs> Robert wants the empanadas. Yeah. 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 Those are as sure. thickle as the chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> oh. 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 I think gonna, I slept through cookie time, time today, yeah. so I don't know what uh, yeah. they, what they, they said. Today. Out today. Oh, was there nothing yeah. today? No, there was. Oh, I got a cool. I, I heard <laughs> apple turnovers or something. There were, in fact, yeah, chocolate chip cookies. Whoa. Okay. You just had to be really quick, and I was not. Oh, they were on them today. Got it. Mm -hmm. I think some people I needed, on this I crew sleep. set an alarm. I do. I set an alarm, but I slipped through my alarm today, so I'm oh, off the hook. No. You know? <laughs> but it wasn't you today, but yeah. it usually is Mahina, but not yeah. today. I should I set an alarm just so I can watch the chaos. Yeah. yeah. I love it. I know uh, Tito and Mike were sitting outside yesterday, and I was just reading my book outside on the lanai, the porch with them, and then all of a sudden, Mike's like cookie time, <laughs> and all three of us. And I was like, you don't have to tell us, Joy. Oh my <laughs> yeah, we went in there. Uh, so little things and cookies were had. Just make, it make a is, difference, isn't it? Yeah, I was telling Hans my sugar intake went down, which is great, yeah. but I mean, <laughs> but, <laughs> not that great. I'm just, I'm just thinking. I had uh, Malia gave me a packet of Arizona iced tea, you know, like the green Ooh. can one, and uh, I yeah. haven't drank or bought one of those from like the you know, the store, 7-Eleven, for, like, years. Like, probably since, like, high school. And I don't know, I just kind of, like, lost the flavor. I really like the Itoen, like, the Japanese tea. Mm. Ooh, um, those are good. So delicious. But I had it. I had it on watch the other night, and I was just drinking the Arizona iced tea and just so amazed. I was like, this is amazing. So <laughs> I was like, this is so sweet. Oh, so, speaking of Arizona tea, there's actually three new flavors. There is a <laughs> bomb pop, there yeah, is a mango, no, not a mango one, there's a dragon fruit one, I don't know, Ooh. there's there's another Ooh. one. There's three new flavors. But Arizona the connoisseur. Arizona but I know, yeah. I know the one for a fact, it's like, it's like bomb pop. Oh my Ooh, god. Wow. So you have to look them up. There's like three or four flavors that just come out with. And I'm just like, oh, <laughs> where oh do you god. get these from? Yeah. I don't know. I've only, found, I've only found the bomb pop one. You gotta go and to that Houston. Ah, okay, okay. That's where they stockpile all the crazy new flavors of Arizona sweet tea. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's good to know. You're starting to pull us this way. Yeah. Catalina, some X Files fans online. Big, big time. All right. I love that show. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Looking over your shoulder there. Uh, yeah. yeah, I don't hit it. Yeah, I'm about to turn it on right now. Just turn it on. We, do, uh, we don't always share all the wonderful jokes and comments we get online, uh, but they do go on the record uh, to support they the do. scientists for, for, <laughs> years, for years to come. Is all that? So, uh, so they're going to want to know about this whole cookie conversation, and now they'll know. They'll know <laughs> all the thoughts you had about it. And uh, we, appreci no, we appreciate all your comments, all your questions, all your stories, your knowledge as we approach the bottom on this um, on this exploration, the seventh dive of the Ala Al Moana Kaiuli expedition in Papua Hanaumokuakea. You are deep sea travelers with us and we couldn't be more thankful. Um, so even though I don't give a shout out to every single comment that comes in, doesn't mean we don't see them, doesn't mean that, it just means that, you know, 
we got a lot of stuff going on. We're, we have a uh, lot we're, of stuff We're going flying on. around uh, a mile and a half below the surface, and uh, and we love you guys. So glad you're here, tuning in from all over the world, and uh, keep the comments coming, including the jokes. It makes us laugh. If you, if you hear us <laughs> breaking out in laughter, it means people have looked over uh, my shoulder at the screen of uh, some of the jokes that are coming in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like uh, we have a little bit of uh, a return on the sonar. Oh, so we're oh, getting close. Oh. That's our seamount. Yeah, wow. we definitely hit a layer where there's like a current kind of blowing us eastward because we were we had been coming down straight on top of the ridge, and now we're kind of getting pushed off a little. Okay. So yeah, during dive planning today, we were a little skittish about the possibility of a current after yesterday. Well, so. we, uh, you might hear us in the back row go a little bit quiet while we uh, while we make our approach, um, which should be coming pretty soon, so that our front row team can do their job so masterfully as they as they always do, even when it doesn't go quite as planned. Is it is it strong, Catalina? Um, I mean, I'm based on how much we're moving. Um, it must be considerable. Okay. Um, because, yeah, we've been kind of... We're going to find out really soon. Yeah. Cool. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll make do with whatever uh, whatever we're given. Just crossing the 2,500-meter threshold and should be acquiring some sighting the seafloor here shortly. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Is it your, what is it, bol boreal sheet flow or something? Yeah, it looks <laughs> kind of like it. A lot of manganese crust, as far as I can tell. So now that we're settled, we good to make a move up, try to make a move up towards the ridge? Yeah, gotta, um, could we do a quick white that, balance? Yeah, because you're going to get scolded by video. Thank you. That's <laughs> 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 not on my checklist. i got to get ready to put that on my checklist. <laughs> Robert, Robert, nobody else will tell you, but you deserve way more scoldings than you get. So don't, uh, oh. don't worry about it. I get plenty. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness. Sometimes love comes with scoldings too. It happens. It sure can. <laughs>
Okay, so it's gonna go dark first. One moment. Oh, it's thinking. Okay. Alrighty, that looks good to me, thank you. Good? Yes. Alright. Alright. Ooh, what's this white thing? Hey, some corals. Yeah. And a sea cucumber. Sea cucumber. It's, got a, it's got a purple head, or end, I'm not sure which side is the head. <laughs> I think that's uh, the pharynx. I think where the, the tentacles, the feeny tentacles, like to come out. Okay, so that is the head then. Yeah. What we recognize is a head. Can you zoom in? Okay. Zoom in. Are those, just dinner. Oh, are those chitons okay. that we're seeing too? Um, so. Yeah, they're they're just out of the frame right now. Oh, you want to no, go no worries. The Where are you looking? Yeah. They got those little guys right there. Oh. Those yeah, I see the scales. Yeah. yeah. That could be a chiton. We Good eye. Just a little bit. Yeah. Zoom in a bit more. All right, maximum zoom. Could it, is it that or an isopod? Nah, you can see the scales. Okay. Chitons have armored plates. I think theirs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, they're cute little, they remind me of pill bugs. They do. Yes. Pill bugs? Yeah. Pill, pill bugs. Roly polies. <laughs> when I was and five, I had a pet one named Jessica. <laughs> you know what's the thing now? Huh? You know what's the thing? Giant isopod? I don't know, but you know what's the thing now? People keep mm. isopods. Really? Yeah, like they'll have like little terrariums just dedicated to isopods. Oh. And there's like different kinds. There's, yeah, the roly poly bugs and the giant isopods are like really closely related. Really closely related. What we find in the deep sea, we find on land. It's been uh, something we've been talking about throughout this expedition. Some, some correlates. And we, we are joined by the wonderful Asako in science chat. Oh, oh wonderful. Good to have you, Asako. Aloha, Asako. Look forward to meeting you in person one day, Asako. It's a, it's a pleasure to be exploring with you and appreciate all the knowledge you've been sharing with us in the science chat. Mm -hmm. Hercules has acquired, acquired this seamount at uh, 2,530 meters. I think just off of what was said is waypoint one, but not too far off. And uh, we're all set. We're all set to explore. Yeah. So are we looking at some primnoids here? Um. Actually, I would have said that some of these are bamboos, but I haven't been paying. I have been messing with the still cam, trying to make sure that it is. Gotcha. In good view, um, that we can. Okay. I think it's a good zoom, so I have not okay. been paying. Um, I, I think we're good to move if we want to start moving up uh, on top of the ridge. Okay. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Ridge now. Could we move five zero meters at bearing two seven zero? That's pretty good. Amber, I know you're quite busy, but uh, for viewers who maybe aren't familiar with the calibrations that we just yeah, did, um, do you want to explain a little bit about what they were just watching? 
Right, so just to make sure that our camera is kind of giving you a, a true white, because um, as we you know, descend into depth, the you know, color shifts with the depth of the light. Uh, so we do a white balance to calibrate our camera um, to yeah, make the white white and darks darks. <laughs> yeah, gives us a, a, a more a truer look at what we're uh, what we're seeing down in the bottom. So the There's still a blue cast, yeah, but um, yeah, that's yeah. that's just how light works in the deep no. of the water. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, it is clear. Much clearer than yesterday. Yeah. Asako says hello to everybody in the control van. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if we end up having issues with current, we'll uh, we'll figure out some adjustments on the fly. Yeah. Well, we're certainly not having issues here right now. Excellent. That is uh, <laughs> it is much more reassuring than uh, a little bit of the struggle bus we were dealing with yesterday. Could we get a zoom on one of these bamboos yeah. when you? I've, I'm sorry if I um, haven't been paying zoom total in? attention. Yeah, if you could zoom Can on one of these. In? Already. Already some beautiful bamboo corals. Mm -hmm. Quite deep. Is this is this a normal depth for them, Virginia? Twenty five hundred meters. Oh yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. they go pretty deep. Yeah, they do. They're uh -huh. um, they're very widespread. Uh -huh. Oh, there's the node. Oh yeah, what is that? I don't know what that is. What a little more zoom. Oh yeah, awesome. Beautiful. like internodal branching. Yes, there it is, internodal branching. And that, is that a sea star? I can't tell what that is. Could be an, an 